Hello and welcome to Code with John. And so today we are going to look at sequential data types in Python. We are continuing with the data type series. Now Python has six sequential data types. These are strings, lists, tuples, bytes, arrays, and range objects. A sequence is a group of items with a deterministic ordering. The order in which we put the items in is the order in which we get the items out. If I put these elements, this is how I'm going to get it. The way I've put in the sequence is the way I'm getting out the sequence. If I add anything in this sequence, the other number will come here and the output will still be the same I like this Isaac then the, 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 the addition number will come here this variable name with value Isaac we can see it's a type of string and we can see when we print that variable name, the way I've put it in, it's the way I'm getting it out. Name Isaac is the same way I'll get it out as Isaac. Now let's look at indexing the sequential data type. Now, data values are made up of characters called elements. Each character is data, in data is an element, like here. Each character is an element. This is data with value Isaac, and this is, these are elements. Now, data values are stored in containers called variables. Now, this is a variable, this is a container called variable. From this that data value. These elements of the data occupy a position in the storage. This position can be accessed via indexing. An index represent, represents a position of each element in the storage. Now let's assume this is the this is the position hold that is being held by the elements Isaac, this value Isaac, and this is the position. These positions can be accessed via indexing. Now this is index and in Python index starts with zero. This is an element i occupying this position which starts at index zero. This position element two it's index one element three is index two element 4 is index 3, element 5 is index 4. An index represents a position of each element in the storage. Python index starts from position 0. Python uses an index method to represent the elements of a variable with sequential data type. We are going to look at the index method later in the course. The first uh, sequential data type I'm going to, we are not going to look at is Python strings. Now, a string in Python represents a collection of alphabets, word, or other characters. You can create a string by surrounding the characters with either single quotes, quote marks, or double quotation marks. For example, We can say print hello print hello. 
Now these are st a string with a single quotation mark and this is a string with double quotation mark. You can assign a string by using the equal sign. For example, uh, greetings variable. We can say You can assign values to a variable by using the equal sign. Then you can print the variable greetings with print or, and then the variable name itself. And then you get hello. Next, we'll look at accessing string elements. You can access the elements of a string by using a square back bracket and the index number of the element. Remember the variable name? Remember this variable name? Now we can access these elements. Isaac, I-S-A-A-C. We can access these elements via indexing. This is element 1, element 2, element 3, element 4, element 5. This is index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4. I can say access element by position. Let's say position 3, which is 1, 2, 3. But this is index 0, 1, 2. position 3 but index is 0 1 2 there it is or I can say element at position what let's say element at position 1 element at position 1 there it is Just to refresh, this is element 1, element 2, element 3, element 4, element 5. But the index in this position is index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4, and so on. Now let's look at placing strings. With the slice syntax, you can return a range of characters in a string. To return a part of the string, specify the start index and the end index separated by a column. Let us look at this string variable. I'm going to copy it. There's a string variable with value how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Now, we can get characters from position 4 and 21, which is not included in variable unity. Now, which is position 4? 0. No, this is position 1, 2, 3, 4. Position 1, 2, 3, 4. From position 4 and 21 not included. 21, where is position 21? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, up to here. So it's good to do unity. Unity 1. 21. There it is from index 0, sorry. 
we're going to get uh, values characters from index 0 to 21 0 1 2 3 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So 21 is not included. So from position, from index 4, it should be index. From index 4 to 21. 21 is here, but 21 is not going to be included, so it's going up to 20. When you leave out the end index, the range will go all the way to the end. For example, when you want to get the characters from index 32 until the end, this is how you do it. Now, you've left the end index. This one will give me from index 32 up to the end as you can see this is index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 as you can see uh, there's a space here. This is index 32. Now, I believe this is index 33. Let's see. Yeah. From index 33, where there's no space. Yeah, index 33, where there's no space. 32 will give me this space. This character space here. There it is. You can start the slice from the end of the screen. It's called negative indexing. Now, you, let's say, for example, you can get the characters from index 5 till index 1. Now, with negative indexing, last character is negative 1, this is negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. That's how indexing starts from, with negative indexing. So let's say uh, we want to say negative 5 to negative 1. As you can see, with the unity one variable, the string with negative indexing, negative five, it's negative one, two, three, four, five. It's from N, negative one, with slicing, um, negative one is not included, which is this one. So you'll have nitty. When you're doing slicing, when you put the index here, the last the last character is usually for the index is not included. If I want to include this last character here, this is what I'm going to do. From negative five till the end, and there it is. That exclamation mark character, I get it now. Now we have to negative one. Now let's get the characters till the end from negative five. This is what we're going to do. Now let's look at string functions.
we have different types of, of functions that will help you work with strings in your analysis. A function is a piece of reusable code aimed at solving a particular task. Python has some inbuilt functions that enable us to perform particular tasks. This enables us to call functions instead of writing our code for some predefined task. For example, we can use the len function to return the length of a string. Now to return the length of a string variable channel with elements called with John, this one channel variable, this is called with John. We use this function. The length function. Now this was going to give us the length of these characters is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is the length of this channel variable. You remember our string variable name, which had the values Isaac? Now, for us to return the string variable to the length of the string variable name, It's five, and when you print the variable name, let's see what it gives us. Yeah, these are one, two, three, four, five characters. Now you can return the lowest value in a Python sequence, but by using the minimum function, let's say min, let's see variable dog, This is the minimum alphabetically. Um, if I want to return the maximum, I can do this. Use the max function. Alphabetically. Or is the max. We can say uh, return the lowest we can return the last value of a variable name so we can say minimum which is i as you can see here This is the highest value in variable name. Now, this is to show you how Python um, treats uh, capital letters. When you say minimum name, which had a value Isaac, but the I was a capital I, and Python starts with the capital letters first, then the small letters. Now, if I put the small letter, I start Isaac with a small letter. Now, when I say minimum value alphabetically, now the minimum value is going to be A. Because Python will first sort the capital letters first, then the small letters. Now let's look at methods that work with strings. Now, methods that work with strings. A method is a function which belongs to an object. An object is an instance of a class. 
and a class is like a blueprint while an instance is a copy of the class with actual values. Now, uh, let me expand on this. We say uh, this variable name, let's say this variable name to Leo. So we say type name to Now, this one here, as we said earlier, it's a variable. This one here, this is value. This is a value of this variable. A variable is a container for data values. Now, we've stored this value under this variable. Now, this, vari this variable name to is of class string. If I print out the type of this variable name is of class string. This one is an instance of this class string, which is called an object. This is called an object because it represents this class. It, an object is an instance of a class. Now, this is the blueprint, a string. This variable has a value string. I can have... Uh, Which number then I put an int so let's say it's week eight and if I print this type of this variable it will give me class integer for int remember we did the the first the first lesson we did about integers, number types. Now, this is a variable. Now, this is a variable, week number with value eight. And the type of this week number is of class int. Now, this is this variable is an instance of this class int. This variable name, since this one is a string, is of class string. Now, this is called an object. This is called an object. All variables are objects, but objects of different of different instance of a class. Let, let, let's try another one. variable suite with value value true you say suites now this is a class bool which is for boolean value true or false now this variable suite has a value to true and this true is of type boolean now the class the type of this variable suite is bool is bool now this is an object which has an instance of a class bool now when you come here a method is a function which belongs to an object. An object is an instance of a class. A class is like a blueprint, while an instance is a copy of the class with actual values. Now, this is the difference between functions and methods. Functions take objects as inputs. 
while method in contracts acts on an object. Now, like I can say minimum, there's a function. I can say minimum, uh, I can say print, print minimum, uh, name two. Now, this is a function which from here a function takes objects as inputs. Now, this is a function minimum. This is an object. Now, this function has taken this object as input. Let me remove this print on screen first because this print now is also a function, an inbuilt function. Now, minimum is an inbuilt function which now takes an object as input. This is the minimum function itself. So you put the object here as input, which is here. Now we put the object and it's going to give you the minimum value of this object. This object has values, uh, which is Leo. Now let's see. As always, Python takes the first sorts the capital letters first. Now I can say from here, um, I can say the small letter Leo. Let's see. Then I come back here. Now Leo, the minimum value is E. We can also use the len function. As you can see, it gives me three. Now this length, this function has taken the object as input length, but now uh, methods, they're just a piece of reusable code, but they act on objects. Now let's see, now let's look at methods that modify strings. Let's look at methods. Let's look at this name variable. Which is Isaac. Now, let's look at the uppercase method. Now, we use the upper method to return the string in uppercase. Now, we can say this is the variable dot upper as you can see this method is just a function but it acts on this object like you, you see here this is a function that prints to the screen the print function has taken a name as an input it has given us the output of the values but now the method which is still a, a piece of reusable code we say name then we use dot then upper now this one works on this value then it gives us another value because this name isaac is small letters capital then small letters but now we said upper we've gotten all caps we can say even for lowercase Um, we use the lower method. So this variable name, as you can see, it has changed it to a lowercase. As you can see, the methods give us values, but these values will have to save them to another variable. It, 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 it can't change uh, the original value 
what you have to do, you'll have to save it. You'll have to save, for example, I can say, yeah. name upper equals to the object name upper then I can print that name upper name upper has a value in caps but the original name is still intact now let's look at white space. How do you remove white space in strings? We use the strip method. For example, if I have if I have uh, I say name three. Now we have this uh, uh, variable. Let's assign it first with trailing spaces. We have there's a space here and there's a space here. Isaac. And if I print it, You won't see it from here. I'll use an example where you can see the, the, the trailing space. But this one, if I look at the length, if I use a function, len m3, I can see it's seven, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In real sense, Isaac is supposed to have one, two, three, four, five. Now, to remove the white space here, we use the method strip. So we can say name let's save this first name three strip. Equals to empty dot strip. Now this is the strip method. As you can see now. We've removed this white space. Now, when you we look at, uh, when you use this function, length function, and uh, look at uh, it's five, which is one, two, three, four, five. Now we've removed the trail, the space that was here and the space that was here. Now let's use another one. Let's use. Uh, Another and in the example, let's say fruits. Fruits equals to what you do now, you just say fruits. Let's say this. Uh, Strip. Now you can input the characters that you want to strip, uh, which is that one, and that one, and that one, sorry, and that one. These are the characters that we like to strip. There's a full stop, there's a comma, there's a forward slash, and there's letter S. Now when you do this, As you can see, we've removed these unwanted characters. 
now we have apple without these characters the leading and trailing space uh, characters we've removed now let's look another another method uh, this is good for your analysis uh, we can uh, look at how you can replace a string you use the replace method to replace a string fruits 2 like this one fruits 2 has the value apple now if you want to change this one a to another letter let's say O. we can do this we can use the replace method um, you can say Now, as you can see, we have fruits two that replace A with O. Now, this, this one gives us Opal. And remember, if you want to save this variable, this just prints on the screen. If you, are, you want to save it, you have to save it to a variable. You can say... And when you print, sorry, now this fruits, fruits tree has the value opal, but fruits. to maintains its original value now you can count you can count string values the count function finds the number of times a specified value appears in a given string Now the count function finds the number of times a specified value appears in a given string. Now we can return the number of times reality appears in the string variable kn1. So a dream does not come does not become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. Now we are looking for reality in the string. KN1, we're looking at the number of times, the number of times reality appears in this string variable KN1. Now, how we do it is we take the object, then we put the method, count, then we put the value that we want, reality. It appears only one time let's look at another one um, let's look at a comma now you can see that uh, this comma value appears two times and as we go back here let's see this is the first instance uh, this is the second instance now we can look at looping in strings. Uh, we are going to we look at loop uh, in depth uh, later. But now let's just look uh, at looping in strings. Strings are arrays, and we can loop through the characters in a string with a for loop. An array is a collection of items of same data type stored at contiguous memory locations. So. For example, we can say for x, this is our for loop in banana. Uh, 
pre-checks. Now, this is a string banana. For x in banana, now you're going to loop. Now it prints out on the screen one by one, looping until the end. So it will loop here, B, print here, A, print here, N, until the end. You can check if a value or a certain phrase is in a string. Uh, let me see. We can use the key keyword in to check if a certain phrase or character is present in a string. For example, I can give you a string. Let me copy the string. This is a string. So let's say print. The salvation variable. Now this is the string itself. So You can check if free is in salvation, so we can say print. Uh, what are you looking for? This is what you're looking for in salvation. So we're checking if free is in salvation variable. The salvation variable has these values. For the wages of sin is there, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now we check if free in salvation sorry salvation <laughs> supposed to be salvation you get a boolean value if it's there if it's not there you get a uh, uh, let me see lost if lost is in salvation you get false a boolean value which is false but we are looking at uh, free True. You can even use this keyword in an if statement. We are going to look at if statement later. Now this is when you want to print on the screen. Now we can say if this uh, free string in the variable salvation salvation salvation. Print yes. Uh, let's use uh, single quotes. Yes, so that I can use this free using salvation. We can also use the keyword not in to check if a certain phrase or character is not present in a string. We can also use this the keyword not in to check if a certain phrase or character is not present in a string. How do you do that? Let's check if expensive As you can see, expensive is not in salvation. Let's look at gifts. What will gift give us? False, because gift is in salvation. Gift value, this phrase gift is in salvation variable. So, Let's print salvation here. Yeah. So as you can see, check if expensive is not in salvation variable. We found expensive is truly not in salvation variable but when you see gifts we 
can see that gift is in salvation. So this statement is not true, so it's going to give me false. But expensive. It's true, expensive is not in salvation. We can still use an if statement for this. You can say if expensive not in salvation. Now, this is the condition, if expensive, not in salvation, then we print yes, expensive is not in salvation. As you can see here, there's no phrase expensive in this salvation variable. Let's see. Yeah, expensive is not in salvation variable. We look further into if statements later in the, in the course. So, don't get confused here. We deal with the if statement later in the course. Now that comes concludes the end of uh, string data type, a sequential data type uh, of type string. Now we're going to look at uh, list data types. Thank you for tuning in. We we'll look at the other sequential data types like list and tuples in the next video. Kindly like, share, and subscribe to help my channel. Do have a lovely day and be blessed.